At the University of Georgia, Dr. Eric Mueller is a busy man. He's a full professor, director of equine programs, chief of staff at the Large Animal Veterinary Medical Teaching Hospital, and a surgeon. I caught up with him in Hawaii to talk about colic and why it can be so deadly for horses. How do you define colic to your veterinary students? It's a generalized term that means pain originating from the abdomen. So most of the time it's associated with the gastrointestinal tract, the stomach, the small intestine, or the large intestine, but it can also come from other organs that are in the abdomen, such as the uterus, the lungs that are cranial to the abdomen or in front of the abdomen, they can act like colic. So it's just a general term for pain originating from the abdominal cavity. Now when I think of colic, though, I, almost, I, I think it usually has something to do with an interference with the normal movement of stuff through the the system. Horses have to be moving things from the front to the back and the way they digest things is a little different than you and I. They have hay and forage that comes through there. They have bacteria in their intestine that work and actually ferment that hay and they produce a gas. So if the gas is always being produced, it has to be moved from front to back. Now if there is a problem where either the intestine is not working correctly or it gets in the wrong place or in the waste, worst case scenario twists, then you have a physical obstruction and the gas cannot move from the front to the back and then you'll get colic. Sometimes it can be a physical blockage, what we call an impaction, where they get dehydrated and then the hay and the material gets stuck yeah. in the intestine. And then sometimes it can be where the intestine actually gets out of place. As the horse was designed, it was designed to be a grazing animal, constantly eating, and the intestine, different than you and I, is fairly free to move throughout the abdomen where our intestine's pretty firmly attached and it's very difficult to get out of place, the horse's intestine kind of move every which way and sometimes it gets in a wrong position and then causes a blockage. So what actually is, is the danger to the horse of having that kind of obstruction in there? That's, that's very good. So most people think that the physical blockage is, is the problem and, and it can be, but really what happens if you get a physical blockage for long enough the intestine continues to produce gas, and that gas can cause the intestine to really grow in size, and one, make it difficult for the horse to breathe, but two, more importantly, what happens with colic, it's not so much the blockage that causes the problem, but if it's blocked for long enough, the intestine gets somewhat compromised, and they start to absorb some of those toxins that are within the intestine into their bloodstream, and then uh. they get very sick. And those toxins, which we call a systemic inflammatory response syndrome, uh, or so in the old term was endotoxemia. Those toxins work on the heart, they work on the kidney, they work on the lungs. Because they're carried by the blood. Right, to decrease the function, the normal function of those. So eventually what happens if it's not treated, the horses can have multi-organ failure. So it starts out as a, as a term really for kind of a symptom. We also think of it as the underlying process that's causing the pain. Right. Early on, he may curl his lip, a flaming response, we call it. Well, he'll curl the lip up. He may look at his flank, may stretch out, which is the old term of kidney colic, because they thought that the horses were stretching out to uh, go to the bathroom. Mm -hmm. But in fact, they're just trying to get comfortable. And reposition the reposition gut a little bit. themselves. And then as it progresses and get worse, the horses may lay down, they may roll, and in the worst case scenario, you can see a horse standing there absolutely normally in the next two seconds, he's laying on the ground. I mean, throwing himself on the ground. Wow. Just trying to get some relief. Wow. And in those instances, very often it's, it's a more severe colic where the blood supply to the intestine now has been twisted and actually compromised. And that's the most potent stimulus for abdominal pain. Now, once that blood supply is compromised, doesn't tissue start dying? It does, and it depends on how tight it is and for how long, but usually if it's a complete twist, you usually have between three and four hours before that, that intestine undergoes an irreversible damage. And in those instances, the only treatment is to go in there and it's almost, it's a little bit like a plumbing job. So you, you have to remove that piece of intestine or that piece of the pipe and then put it back together. Ischemia is when there's no blood flow to the tissue, so ischemia leads to necrosis, which leads to dead intestine. Now you talked about one of the things that a horse might do is roll. Sometimes people worry when they see their horse rolling in kind of a normal everyday context. Mm -hmm. 
is that cause for concern? No, no, and that's a very common misconception. So people think the horse was rolling and then he colicked, and actually that rolling is a response to the pain. That horse is trying to get away from the pain. Normal everyday horses that roll in the mud and fresh shavings, that is an absolutely normal response. The difference is you'll see that horse go, sniff around, lay down, roll, get comfortable, and then get back up. Normally he won't do it multiple times. These horses that are incredibly painful, they'll crouch a little bit, they get uncomfortable, they don't know if they want to lay down or get up. It's a whole complex of behaviors that exactly. together tell you the horse is in distress. E exactly. And probably in hindsight, most owners will say, you know, the first thing I noticed, all the other horses came up to get her breakfast and this one stayed back. So usually in hindsight, it's a loss of appetite. It's probably one of the first things. Much like if you, your stomach didn't feel well in the morning and yeah. somebody offered you breakfast, you say, oh, I'm not that hungry right now. Yeah. Same thing with the, with the horses. It's a progression of signs. You know, unfortunately, we can't look at one sign and say exactly what it is. Once equine colic has been diagnosed, treatment needs to begin as soon as possible. The two questions are, one, is this something we can treat medically? Or do we have to go to surgery? Yeah. And then two is, you know, what are the chances of, that he's gonna make it? And we're lucky in that if you took 100 horses and 100 of them colicked tonight, thank goodness about 92 to 95 of those horses would respond very well to medical treatment. I thought you were gonna say it might kind of fix itself. Sometimes it will. That, that, what I call that gas colic is a little bit crampy, a little bit ouchy. Still, it's a good idea to call your veterinarian if you see that and it continues. And by the time the veterinarian comes out, he may have passed that. So what can the horse owner do in the interim? It all depends on how severely the horse is colic. And it's a mild bit of colic where the horse is mildly uncomfortable looking at his flank, curling his lip. I think walking the horse is absolutely fine. It's not that it actually stimulates intestinal motility or make him get it over it, but it, it gets the owner's mind off of it a little bit. It gets the horse's mind off of it a little bit. And the most important thing is to be safe. Because in, in the rare instance where you have that horse that's very painful, that's throwing himself down and getting up, all these owners want to get in to that stall or that area and try to keep that horse up. And it's very dangerous because that horse is in so much pain, he's going to react to it. It's not going to hurt him as far as the intestine. They're not going to twist anymore. The second thing I tell people is if they have hay in the stall, take it away. If they will drink water, that's fantastic. Sometimes I'll let them graze a little bit of grass. Grass is very high in water content. Mm -hmm. And just the act of eating can stimulate intestinal motility and sometimes work things out. And they're moving around a little right. bit to do that. But I think most importantly, you want to call your veterinarian first. He may have you give a small dose of a visceral analgesic pain relief, usually banamine, to sometimes breaks that pain cycle. Uh, because what's happening inside now is the horse has a little bit of gas, colic, or an obstruction, and he gets painful. And when the horse gets painful, it activates what we call the sympathetic nerve system, and that slows down the intestine. So they get painful, they activate this nerve system, it slows down the intestine some more, they get painful, it's vicious this circle. vicious cycle. And if you can break that cycle with pain relief or moving, or sometimes even passing, you know, when the vet comes out and passes a stomach tube, that's all you have to do to break that cycle, get things moving again, and like you said, they can work themselves out. Are some horses just more prone to so, colic? So that's a very good question. There are some horses that colic more than others, but uh, even when we investigate those very closely with lots of tests and different, different procedures, it's very difficult to find the cause of chronic colic. I can tell you there are certain conditions that we know are associated with colic in broodmare populations right around birth or just after birth. Those mares have a higher incidence of a colon torsion where the large intestine actually twists. We don't exactly know why that is. It's been theorized that now you have this fetus in there that's kind of moving things around and especially afterwards when the foal comes out now this huge void. It mm -hmm. makes the colon a little bit more susceptible. Broodmare comes in and she's got a foal at her side that's a couple months old and she's really uncomfortable. You could probably make money betting that it has a colon torsion. There's certain hays that are a little finer. So coastal Bermuda hay, which we see in the southeast, is a little finer 
than Timothy or alfalfa. So, like so what, it clumps up inside? It, it, it almost gets in the intestine like a gum that sticks to things. And so some horses that come down to the south that are immediately introduced in the large amounts of coastal Bermuda right from Timothy can be at a little higher incidence of ileal impactions. Those are feed impactions of the very last part of the small intestine. Yeah. And I, I want to make it clear, there's lots of horses that don't have it. Yeah. Um, but if you're moving a horse from the north to the south and you're going to change the diet, you know, you probably need to just do it. It's safer to do it slower and introduce okay. that over time. But seven to ten days is the rule of time. Yeah, I usually tell people over a month, you know, bring, bring some of your own hay if you can and then yeah. just cut it in gradually. You know, you mentioned that kind of clumping up and... And it reminded me of psyllium used for sand colic. Mm -hmm. Talk a little bit about sand colic and how that, that differs from these other yeah. ones. Yeah, you'll see it in a lot of areas uh, that have a high uh, preponderance of sand in the soil. We tend to see it more in the fall and the winter. And why is that? The pastures get lower, the horses are eating off the ground, the grass is shorter, and they're ingesting more sand. The sand is very irritating to the inside of the intestine. The inflammation leads to the release of these mediators that slows down intestinal motility. So number one, it causes irritation and slowing, and then number two, it can cause a physical blockage. The gas can no longer move from the front to the back. So what happens is everything that's in front of that blockage distends with gas. Yeah. And, uh, and then you have to go in there and it's a little bit of a plumbing job. Say you have a new horse owner. Is there any d advice you can give them that helps prevent colic? It's a good adequate water source, a trace mineral salt to promote water intake and anticipate feed changes. And, and whatever you do, do it gradually. There's a lot of myths out there. Some people think they colic with a weather storm. Some people think they colic when the ch weather changes, full moon. They've done studies with all that and there's no real scientific evidence. But what I tell people is horses are creatures or habit. And if you're ever gonna make a dramatic change in their life, anticipate that change and do it gradually. Well, thank you very much. This has been very enlightening and uh, you explain things so well. I can see why uh, people uh, love going to your yeah. classes at the University of Georgia. Thanks for being with us, Dr. Well, thank Mueller. you very much. Appreciate it. Thanks.